rather than trying to step into a void and create some kind of activity, look around for where action is already happening and join it. Welcome in, everyone, to the Louisiana Now podcast. I'm your host, Todd Rossnagel. So good to have everyone along with us. That voice off the top of today's podcast, Susan Beaumont. Susan Beaumont is a consultant, author, and coach. She has worked with hundreds of congregations inside the United Methodist Church, including several churches inside the Louisiana Conference. She is known for her groundbreaking work in leadership dynamics. We'll get to that interview with Susan in just a bit. But first, we want to thank all of you for subscribing and sharing the Louisiana Now podcast. We've had over 1,000 unique downloads since the coronavirus began. We've said from the very beginning that this outlet is proving to be a germ-free outlet and a great way to share the news, opportunities, and witness of the Louisiana Conference. So we thank you. Please continue to share and subscribe. We'd also like to thank the United Methodist Foundation of Louisiana, our sponsor of the Louisiana Now podcast. Remember, one of the things that churches today are really struggling with is falling donations. Your church needs an online giving portal, period. And the foundation can help you set one up today at no cost. UMF.org is the website. Contact them. It is quick. It is easy. And even if you think it's not easy, guess what? They'll do the hard work for you. Now to our interview with Reverend Beaumont. She is an ordained minister with an MDiv from the McCormick Theological Seminary. Susan is the author of How to Lead When You Don't Know Where You're Going. And we thought a conversation with Susan would be, well, Ideal, because now more than ever, we are all experiencing the exact title of her book, right? We are all called to lead in some form or fashion, whether we're a pastor, a nurse, a school teacher, a mom, a dad, a senator, a president, a delivery truck driver. We are all called to lead. Yet at the same time, we do not know where we are going, do we? And that was my first question to Susan. What would her first piece of advice be for all of us? I think my first um, my first word would be breathe <laughs> and um, resist the strong temptation to act from a place of strong authority. So when people are anxious in times like this one, uh, when we find ourselves in the midst of a crisis, People look around uh, and they want to attach themselves to strong authoritarian leadership. They want quick answers. They want somebody to resolve their disorientation and to take them back to their comfort zone. Or if we can't take me back to my comfort zone, please take me forward to some kind of resolved situation, but don't leave me here in the disorientation. And in fact, the power in seasons like this one is, in fact, in the disorientation, uh, in our ability to say, we're not equipped for this moment, and we need to discover all new pathways. And if we're going to do that, then we all have to sit here together in the disorientation and attend to what is unfolding in front of us. And we can't be tempted by platitudes about how easily we can get back to where we were. So what I hear you saying is the potentiality for all of us, as difficult as it might be, is to simply embrace the new normal. Uh, Yeah. And I would use the word to surrender to it, Mm. Um, not surrender in the sense of giving up, Um, not surrender in the sense of all is lost. We might as well just sit here and be miserable together, but surrender in the sense of acknowledging that this is our new reality, at least for now. And that it has, um, it has some demands that we need to step up to, and it has some new things to teach us, particularly for church leaders. There is so much ripeness to what's happening right in this moment about what church in the next generation is going to be like. And, um, and the best way for us to em- embrace that and learn from it and step into it is to surrender to the reality of where we are. Um, 
you know, that the church has literally left the building. Uh, our, our buildings are closed. <laughs> and, um, and so this is an opportunity to discover uh, a lot of new things and to make many mistakes and to have failure and mistakes become normalized in a way that they weren't even three weeks ago. Um, and, and so we need to be attentive to that. Surrendering is what allows me to discover the richness in what I'm having and experiencing rather than striving. You know, the opposite of surrender in my experience is to strive, to strive against it, to say, we can overcome this. If I work hard enough, I can solve all these problems. If I work hard enough right now, I can create an online worship experience that's going to feel exactly what it felt like for you to come in and worship with everyone else. And that's um, that's a false striving, and it's a and it creates a busyness that exhausts us. Instead of um, and leaning into, okay, this is where I am now. Uh, breathe, uh, attend to what is unfolding right in front of me, and and do the next right thing that I can imagine here. Susan, the subtitle of your book is "Leading in a Liminal Season." The word "liminal." Uh, not exactly a word we use in everyday conversation. What what does that word mean, and and why do you think it's important specifically for this time? Mm. Well, you know that that was originally my my title for the book was leading in a liminal season until the publisher said no one knows what this word means. We can't use this as the lead <laughs> title, uh, which is how I came around to saying, well, then that, then it's about how to lead when you don't know where you're going. Um, but liminality, um, liminal is a word that means um, the space in between. Uh, liminal is when we are uh, in the midst of something that has ended and a new thing that is not yet ready to begin. And we find ourselves stuck in the disorientation between those two zones. Uh, the word itself comes, the root of the word comes from the Latin word limen. And in Roman times, that word was used literally to talk about the threshold, the stone at the base of the threshold of a door, when someone would come from the outside to the inside and stop to clean their shoes off at that threshold place before coming into the inside. Hmm. So liminality is a betwixt in between place. It's, um, it's very disorienting, but it's also very freeing because it's a time when we're leaving behind something um, and we're letting go of some old assumptions and practices, but we are not yet fully knowing what the new thing is. So we have to just sit in the disorientation. And the reason that's, that's I think hard. <laughs> that's very that, that, hard. That's that's hard, and it's not a good place to be in some way, right? I mean, it's 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 challenging, right? But if you know, if we pay attention, we have been in liminal spaces um, all of our lives. We send our kids off to summer camps. We send adults on pilgrimages and mission trips. And uh, we do that because we know we're sending people into a different space where they're transformed. And, and what we're sending them into is liminality, where, um, where they're in a place where none of the social constructs that have defined who they are go with them. They have, they have to go raw into that liminal space. And it, it's there that they experience transformation, right? So um, if we, and, and when we look at the desert mothers and fathers, they, you know, they invited liminality as a way of life. Monasticism does that, um, tries to live um, in a liminal space. Uh, we know when we change pastors that we invite a congregation into liminality. Uh, into a, a space in between two styles of leadership. And we see how things get unfrozen there and how mm. some rich new things are born. So it's not that we don't know what liminality is. What's unnerving for so many of us right now is that everything about our experience has become liminal all at the same time. How do we know when to just stop and pay attention? And at the same time, when it's important to act? Because like you said, I mean, this is this is exciting. This is, this is something new. I think a lot of us are, are acting and trying to do a lot of things. But I, what I hear you saying is, I, I think we probably need to, to stop and pay attention, right? Yeah, I would in this season, to the extent that it's possible. I mean, I don't want to be naive about this. Um, you know, as of two weeks ago, pastors everywhere have just been thrown into chaos.
you know, I was just joking to someone uh, this morning, I'm a person who makes lists. You know, I, I like creating my lists at the beginning of the week and, and crossing things off as kind of a sense of I'm making progress, I'm moving through my list. Well, these days I'm just crossing all kinds of things off the list, not because I finish them, but because they're no longer relevant. <laughs> the thing I said I was going to do on Monday is not relevant on Friday anymore. So I, I think that in this moment, it behooves us to err um, on the side of paying attention over acting. To just noticing um, and there's there's a series of questions that I wrote about and uh, are included in the book that I think are really helpful right now and um, and I think what we should do is ask ourselves these questions and decide to not act until we have we've made some kind of attempt to answer these questions and and the basic questions are this what is it that my people need more of right now right now um, you know rather than just rushing into saying, I have to figure out how to do a virtual worship service is ask myself the question, is this what my people need right now? Or is what they need right now more of a fireside chat from their pastor? Or do they need to hear our music director play their favorite hymn? So what question if asked and answered right now would make a difference in this situation? You know, what is, what is the biggest unknown thing I'm grappling with? What can we do together that none of us could do alone? Uh, we're all alone right now, uh, but we're not. So what is it that we could put ourselves together to do that we couldn't do individually? And how do I um, elicit that out of my action? What is arising right now? And how do we become responsible stewards of what is arising? So rather than trying to step into a void and create some kind of activity, look around for where action is already happening and join it. Um, figure out what is already afoot, what is already emerging, and put your energy into helping that fan into something. Um, and then my last question is, given what has happened, what is possible next? And, uh, and to fight the temptation to say, how do I create as much comfort for my people as I can? How do I create and make church as normal as I can? Uh, for people now, that's not the question. Um, given what has happened, given where we are, what is possible next in the scheme of things that are in front of me? You wrote an article, um, um, about, it was about 10 years ago, after the collapse of the economy in 2008, it was entitled 10 Things You Can Do Right Now to Reduce Anxiety in Your Congregation. Um, wonderful tips. Uh, we'll, we'll include a link to that uh, in the show notes for this podcast. And I'm, I'm struck by the last tip that you, you had. Take active steps to manage your own anxiety and to remain non-anxious in your own leadership. What would be your final word for pastors and congregational leaders who may be listening to this um, about taking care of themselves? I think that um, in a season like this one, in a liminal space, there are three fundamental spiritual shifts that leaders have to make to lead well. And, um, and one of them I've talked about a little already, so I'm gonna save that one for last. But the first shift, I think, is moving from a stance of knowing to a primary stance of unknowing. Um, when people are anxious, when we're anxious, our natural tendency is to want to grab onto all of the things we feel some sense of certainty about, all of the things we know. And uh, what I'm inviting you to in a season like this one is to move out of that place of trusting your knowledge into a place of deep suspicion about what you know, into a place of, um, of unknowing, of being okay to saying to people, I don't know the answer to that. I don't know how to resolve this to help you feel more comfortable. I don't know where we're going, but I will stand here with you in our mutual not knowing, and it will be okay. And people respond to that kind of leadership uh, over the kind of leadership that pretends it has some kind of answer. So one way to care for yourself and to manage your own anxiety is just to make that shift right away to say, I need to move out of this knowing stance firmly into this unknowing stance. The second shift that I think helps us is to move out of an advocating stance into 
an attending stance. I pick some kind of answer that I think will resolve our dilemma right now. And I decide I'm, I'm going with this, that all of my energy right now is going to go into um, uh, what we do about our Sunday morning worship experience and get the bulletin online so people can see it. Okay, that's an advocating stance. An attending stance is when I sink into that place of unknowing and begin to notice what's being called for next. And it may be that bulletin thing, it may be the online worship experience, but it might not be. It might be something totally different that I'm noticing that there is a longing for. So um, in seasons like this, when we move out of advocacy and into attending, and I'm not saying don't, that, that we need to quit advocating for, for people or for issues. That, that's not what I'm talking about. There's some strong advocacy that needs to be happening now for people on the margins and people who are being left behind. I'm talking about the advocacy within your own leadership stance to move into that place of question asking and noticing and paying attention to longing. That's how spirit moves through community is through our mutual longing. So as you're listening to people talk about um, what's happening for them in this experience, pay attention to the longing below the need that they may be expressing and, and work with the longing. That's that sense of attending to that. And the third shift is moving uh, from a place of striving against the place we are at and moving into this place of surrender that I talked about a little bit earlier, into this, this sense of saying, this is where I am. Now what I need to do is to pay attention to what where I am can teach me about what needs to happen next, instead of striving against it, instead of battling the fact that I'm in this place, I accept that I'm in this place. And then I begin to look for opportunities of what that can teach me to to be in that place of acceptance. Susan Beaumont, consultant, coach, author, her book, How to Lead When You Don't Know Where You're Going. Susan, thanks for your time. Thank you, Todd. We've included a link to Susan's book and to the blog articles that we think you'll enjoy in the show notes of this podcast. Thanks again for listening. The Louisiana Now podcast is a production of the Department of Communications inside the Louisiana Conference. It's produced by Mary Burley. We thank her for her time. We will continue to search for great stories and great guests here on the Louisiana Now podcast. If you have one, we'd love to hear from you. The email is simple, podcast at la-umc.org. Again, that email address, podcast at la-umc.org. Until next time, may the grace of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all.